now tuned in to the SD Experience Sports Podcast. So talk about the finances overseas because there's this myth, there's this uh, thing about guys who go overseas, they make six figures as soon as they get over there. Talk about how to secure your finances, not blow your money, and also how is it on that financial market at the levels of making that six figures or even making that seven figures one day? What is it? Man, yeah, that's a big myth. I remember going overseas and coming back home and everybody think I just got a lot of money. And that wasn't the case. My first contract, man, I tell people all the time, my first contract, I could have been working at McDonald's making more money. So it was, it was a grind. It was a real struggle. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm playing professional, but I, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still grinding, bro. I'm still struggling. So you got to save your money. You got, you want to work on investing. You make sure you take care of yourself investing because anything can happen. Uh, injury or anything, anything can be life changing at the moment. But you, you got that's when it comes to mentally tough. You got to be mentally tough because I had this. It was times where I just was like, I can't do this. I'm not making no money. I'm over here by myself. You know, I don't know if this for me, but I grinded it out and I stuck with it. And now I'm at the point where I'm 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 stable. I'm financially stable. I'm looking to invest in uh, different things, you know. And if I wanted to, I can retire right now and not really have any problems. Yeah, I heard it from William Mosley. Make sure you secure the bag and know how to protect the bag. Look, secure. for your youngsters, yes, when you go over there, understand that you might not make the ends that you want to make. The money might not be what you're looking for, but it's patience. It's working hard and having patience. No one's going to believe in your game as much as you believe in your game. William had a support system behind him as well as believing in his own game. So I want to talk about that support system. Um, Talk about your your wife, your kids, and and what did they mean to you during your course of career? Uh, Let me take it back. No, I first met my wife in college. I met my wife in college, and she had been – my ride or die ever since, you know, I had a great support, supporting cast behind me, not only with just my mom and my brothers who was always supporting me, but I had my wife too, you know, she was, she was always there with me a lot of, most of my years, you know, she fly out, she, she took the, the, the role of being a stay at home mom, you know, help raise, raise my son, Landon, while I'm out working. And I told her this, would, you know, I wanted to have a family. So that's what we did. And so I was made sure I was able to provide for her and uh, my son, make sure they have everything they need, you know, and get them most of the, most of the things they wanted, as long as uh, she was there to take care of the household. And I have a lot of, like, after bad games, anything like that, you know, she right there to tell me, don't worry, you know, you, you can get it next time, you know, just keep working, keep uh, pushing. And with my son, you know, he, he look at everything I do. He tell everybody, you know, my dad a basketball player. I want to be just like him. You know, that, that's something, you know, bring tears to your eyes. So you all, that's just help me keep pushing because I know I have him watching my every move. So I want to make sure I, I show him the right way and guide him in a direction that he uh, needs to go. You talked about your wife being there after you have those bad games. Because when you have good games, you don't have to worry about anything. You got people calling, texting, uh, tweeting mm-hmm. you, Snapchatting you. But your wife is there during those dark times. How important is it for having that one special person that you know through thick and thin that always is going to be there? Man, it's very important because... Like I said, after bad games or anything like that, if you have multiple bad games, you know, you start getting down on yourself. You're always going to need someone you can talk to, you know, express your different feelings, not just with basketball, outside of basketball, with what's going on in life. So you, you can, it, a lot of different things can happen to uh, players being overseas. You know, they can fall into depression or anything like that. So it's good to have someone you can you there to talk to and let those different feelings out so you don't have to keep everything bottled in, you know? When you're an overseas player, your mental health is so important because the psychological side of it so is... It's draining. 
I remember the time when I, because I played uh, professionally as well, and you do go through those moments and those spells to where, man, we're not winning. Uh, here I am, where's I miss my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not so accustomed to the culture over here yet. And it's, it's like, man, I miss my boys. I miss everything. So when you do find that special person yeah. that can be there for you, want to be there for you, and will be there for you, make sure you hold on to them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk about one of the toughest opponents you've had since you've been a professional. Who was that guy? Walk me back through that experience, and what was that night like for you? Uh, I would say one of my toughest opponents coming – because I play big man, so I'm facing a lot of players that's bigger than me, taller than me. One of my toughest matchups was uh, Mike Myers, big heavy guy. Uh, this is why I was overseas in Italy. He was a solid guy, looked like a football player, but could move on the court and super strong, pure muscle. That, that had to be one of my toughest because he was so strong. <laughs> I had to think of different ways to, you know, to try to defend him. But he was he was a guy who could easily average 20 and 10, 20 and 15. You know, he was one of those type of guys. Uh, I have another matchup where it's not really my matchup, but another guy I played against, Mike James, back in college and overseas. But Mike James, for those who don't know, is, is – like a top player over here in Europe. He's he's very known. Last year he finished out with the Brooklyn Nets. Matter of fact, point guard, great score. You know, very composed. You know, he he he's so relaxed on the court. I like his all around game, man. And I remember playing him in the Southland uh, Conference when uh, doing the yeah, what Katie. it was I think Katie. Katie was it Katie at the moment? Play Lamar. Yeah, man, those guys, look, shout out Lamar. Shout mm-hmm. out Lamar. We was having one of the best games, man. We was having one of the best nights shooting-wise, uh, my team. I think we might have broke a record for three points and things like that. But those guys came with it. I had one of my best games, too. But those guys are was solid. So shout out to them. They ended up winning the Southland Conference, matter of fact. 